Hello everyone. Welcome to this legal webinar about crowdsourcing. I am Eric Favreau. I am the head of legal at AICA. Uh, actually, I've been working at AICA for quite a few years now. Uh, and my goal is to create and maintain a safe legal framework for all the people who are involved in crowdsourcing, uh, our clients and our community of creators. Today, we are going to discuss how at AICA we manage the legal questions raised by crowdsourcing, including uh, intellectual property, the use of the entries, and confidentiality. This is a quick overview of how we do crowdsourcing from a legal perspective. So here is a uh, Here is a legal, um, a small summary of what we're going to, to discuss today. So we are going to start with what ICA does and then how it works. Uh, we will focus on the content and we will end with some what if scenarios. So what ICA does? Uh, we connect brands and creatives through online challenges. Um, we provide creators with um, a creative playground where they can express their creativity and submit content which uh, eventually would be used by brands. The content can be used in different ways, for instance for advertisement or on social media or for market research. How it works. We allow brands and creators to meet by setting up contests which are available online on, on our website, the ICA.com website. We are in the field of creative crowdsourcing. This means that only the selected entries, those which are the, the closest to the company's expectations, get to be used by the company. At ICA, we have this rule of a minimum of three selected entries. This means that for each uh, project, we have a minimum of three entries, will be selected and used afterwards by the company. The company a contest, it's, um, it's an online competition. This means that participants enter the competition to submit content and to win prizes. Competition means that there is selection. So you should know that in our contests, selection is pretty much based on skills. That's why contests are not sweepstakes where chance plays a big part. In our contest, chance plays no part and, and selection is based on the skills and on the talents of the entrance of the competitor. So here an example of a contest, which is the tip top um, contest that we had on our website. So basically, what do we need to set up a contest? We need a timing, a timing framework, a prize structure, and a brief with the client's business objectives. How do we set the, the criteria about the content? We want to make sure that the creators will submit the content that our clients are expecting. So before a contest is live on our platform, we, we do talk a lot to, to our clients actually, because we, we want to know what the expectations are, what the needs are, and how the outcome of, um, of crowdsourcing promotion can meet the needs. So we issue a couple of documents whose main purpose is to make sure that the contest will be a success. So for instance, on the left, you see the business brief, which, uh, which defines the client's objective. What is the problem that the client is trying to fix? What are the characteristics of the, of the content in terms, uh, for instance, of uh, duration or format? And on the right, you see the community brief, which is the actual expression of the business brief and address to the community. This document is public and will be available online on the on the ICA website, and is uh, get to be seen by the by the community of creators. So you should know that all documents are approved by the client before a contest runs live on our website. We know that for some clients, for many clients actually, confidentiality is a big is a matter that has to be addressed and has to be included in the process. So we are aware that it is important for, for many of our clients. 
So this is how we manage the, the question of confidentiality. Here are examples of the several levels of confidentiality of our contests. On the left, you see a contest, an example of contest, where the brand is confidential. So the brand is not disclosed to the, to the creators. On the ICA, is aware of the name of the client, of the, of the name of the brand. In the middle, you see another example where only the entries are, co are confidential. The brand itself, here is EasyMac for Craft, is disclosed to the community, but the creators don't get to see the entries. The entries are confidential. And on the right, here is an example of a contest with full disclosure. Brands and entries are public. So not only this is how we manage confidentiality on our on, on the website, this is how it appears on the website, but there are also obligations for the creators, obligations to keep some information, the, the information they are provided with, as confidential, should they know uh, information that are um, confidential. And actually this leads us to the questions of obligation and the contract environment of the contest. So let's talk about the rules, the rules of participation. When participating to a call for entries, the creators must accept the rules of participation. The rules set for the, the contractual relationship between ICA, the company, and the participant, and it defines the obligations of the participant. So here is an example, here is an example, and you can have a look at the join contest, I agree to the contest rules button. Indeed, our rules are click wrap contract, so participants must accept the rules by clicking the button prior to participation. The rules are provided by ICA and are individual to each project. They are approved by the company before a project is live, so the rules can be uh, revised by the company uh, if needed according to its internal standards. As a matter of fact, this is my daily job. This is why I do every day. I talk to clients every day and to their legal department. And we agree on the terms of the rules. And we, uh, we explain the terms of the rules. And we revise the documents if needed. So basically, in a nutshell, what do we find in the rules? We will find elements from the brief, such as the price structure, the dates, the guidelines in terms of content, uh, the rules also define the terms of use of the entries, what the company will be able to do with the entries. This is all in the rules. In the rules, we will also find stipulations about warranty and responsibility. This is quite uh, an important matter. Creators are responsible for providing clear content whose use will not harm the company. So when they agree to the rules, the creators warrant that the entries are the own works and that the company shall peacefully enjoy the rights attached to the entries. They also undertake to indemnify and hold the company harmless against any, any action in relation to the use of the entries. This is what is agreed by all participants, but this obligation of warranty will be confirmed by the selected creators when they sign the assignment agreement. This we'll see uh, much deeper later on. At ICA, we believe in providing clear information, clear, accurate information, because we believe that the better informed the creators are and the stronger the, the binding effect of contract is. That's why, along with the rules, uh, a 10-point summary is displayed so that the creators get a better understanding of the of their obligations or participants to a contest. This helps secure the transaction and get a more efficient legal framework for the contest. So for instance, the creators will know that uh, they can't submit illicit content. They will know in a very clear way that IP rights on the winning entries will be assigned to the company and they will know that uh, minor's participation is subject to parental authorization. Most of our contests are run globally, globally with not much restriction in terms of country, 
or age eligibility. But we can adjust to some specific requirements due to some, for instance, to some product regulation or due to some client's internal compliance policy. And here are two examples of what we're able to do in terms of uh, uh, custom tailoring the contest to some specific uh, requirements. For the alcohol beverage contest, we set up an age gate so that we make sure that participants are of legal age uh, in terms of viewing the contest and of course participating to the contest. This is on the left of the screen. And on the right, another example of adaptability, it's uh, the country restriction. So we can adjust ourselves to some country restriction and limit eligibility to a list of countries that the company feels comfortable with. Now let's talk about the content because crowdsourcing, creative crowdsourcing is pretty much about the content, right? Because it's what the brands are looking for and this is what the creators want to share. So let's talk about the content. Um, ICA is in the field of creative crowdsourcing. Uh, so the creators can, depending on, on the contests, they can come up with various kinds of creative and visual works, such as videos or photographs or collage or montage or a design, a design for a product. Of course, only digital formats are accepted because this is internet, right? So no watercolor, no sculpture. At the end of, uh, of the contest and following the selection by the company, some entries are appointed as winning entries. This means that the IP rights, the intellectual property rights upon those entries are transferred to the company. And as a compensation for assigning the IP rights, those creators get a remuneration. They get the prizes defined in the rules. Those prizes are actually paid by ICA on behalf of the company. There is no surprise for the creators, no, no surprise for the company. Indeed, the rules already state what the prizes are. They also state and stipulate what the timeline for delivery of the prizes is. And uh, the number of entries is also all defined in the rules. So there is no surprise. Everyone has agreed to the terms of the contest before participation. Indeed, winners assign the IP right to the company. Non-selected creators retain the IP. It means that they can still submit, submit the material to another, content, to another contest, for instance. Of course, if the company has provided some visual elements, some of its um, distinctive elements, such as trademarks or logos, these must be removed before, before the creator can use uh, his entry. Here is an example of uh, an assignment agreement. Um, like all the documents that we provide, it's approved by the company before being shared with the creator, and it can be revised if needed, so that it is individual to each project and each client. The assignment agreement is the document by which the creator assigned, assigns the rights to the, com to the company. It is binding between the creator acting as a signer and the company acting as a signee, which receives the IP rights. In terms of delivery, the signature is organized by ICA and it's our team of committee managers, our colleagues who work on a daily basis basis, uh, hand in hand with the, with the creators and who are actually fluent in the different language of the community, they get the assignment agreements signed by each creator. And then the documents are shared and sent to the company, the signed document for its record. We want to make sure that the company is in the best position to secure the use of the entries and to secure the transaction. So in additional information or documents can be required from the creators and provided to the company along with the signed assignment agreement. For instance, it could be a model release form for 
someone whose image has been used in a video or in a photograph. It can also be a proof of ID with a passport. It can be a, a license in case the creator has used copyrighted elements such as a music of, or a photograph, an image. Uh, it can be asked to provide the license to, as an evidence that he has purchased the right on the music or on the image. It can also be an authorization from the parent if the creator turns out to be, to be a minor. These information and documents will help the company enforce the, the warranty obligations granted by, by creators. Once the IP rights have been transferred, the company can use the selected entries. So here is a quick summary of how the selected entries can be used by the company. Uh, in a nutshell, let's say that the scope is wide, is as wide as possible with exclusive ownership for the company, with a worldwide scope and maximum duration. Entries can be used in lots of different ways in the different areas of business of the company, such as advertisement, communication, or market research. The entries can be used just as they have been trans transmitted by the creators, but they also can be modified afterwards by the, by the company. They can be refined in order to meet professional standards, so they can be reshot, resized, or cropped. Works can be used also to create new rights and file for protection for trademarks or utility designs. Let's illustrate what we've talked about with some case studies of uh, some projects that we have launched on the ICA website. Let's start with the Hyundai example. Here the idea was to share great experience about what happens in a car. It was actually a great success because uh, we received more than 200 entries coming from 37 countries. So it was quite a, uh, a, big, a big success. The idea submitted by um, Oceanoma, a creator from Italy, was selected as winning. It was really creative and original with this drawing uh, standing in front of a tree uh, and seen from the inside of a car. There was a great idea embodied in this um, entry. This is how the ID turned out to be used eventually after being selected and the, after the IP rights have been assigned. So you see it's quite different, slightly different, but it's really an inspi inspired from the entry from the creator. So the client has created uh, a derivative work by using a combination of elements from the initial work. So we, we can see the resemblance. The picture is taken from the inside of the vehicle. It focuses on, on the element which is outside, displayed at the very center of the image. When we see the similar angle of the right arm, of the right hand and forearm that stretches from the bottom right of the picture. Uh, as a matter of fact, this um, winning entry has been published in several magazines as a print ad. Now let's have a look at the Dirt is Good Unilever contest. Here the idea was to illustrate stories how lessons can be learned through dirt. So here on this slide you can see on the very top of the slide the submission from the participant which is an animated video with kids playing soccer in the mud. And the message is um, dirt is no barrier for fun and it should not prevent from in engaging in fulfilling activities. And at the, at the bottom of the slide you see how it was turned into a TVC and actually broadcasted on TV in the Philippines. I like this example pretty much because I think it, it really shows how crowdsourced content can be used by a big company. Indeed, um, creativity in such case did come from the crowd. It did come from uh, the entry of the, the creator. The guy came up with a creative idea, even though the, um, entrant, the entry failed to meet the professional standards of a TVC. But with our process of IP rights management, with the IP which have been transferred, 
to the client according to what we do. The client had the, the possibility to reshoot the video and create a more professional video and use it as a TVC. And now the last example will be with Chic Quattro. Uh, here the idea was to illustrate the, the titanium effect in the everyday life. Two winners were selected because there were two categories, one for print and the other for video. So these are the two winners and a glimpse of their uh, entries. Eventually both entries were used by the client with not much modification because they turned out to be well executed and there were enough according to the standards of what we expect for social media on Facebook or for a viral video. Let's finish our legal webinar with some what if questions based on the, on the questions that we have received. So the first question will be what if a company wants to, to get exclusive ownership on more than the three minimum entries? Yeah, you may, you may remember that uh, we said that after a contest, three winning entries are selected and subject to assignment of rights. So here is a screenshot of our platform, this client platform. And this is the platform where we manage the contest and where the client gets to access the entries and select the entries. And here you can see the, the difference between, on one hand, the, the winning entry which can be downloaded and a non-winning entry, which cannot be downloaded. So what if a client wants to select more winners? This can be done very easily. Uh, the additional entries can be selected and purchased by the company through this platform. And should such case arise, um, our rule is that uh, an additional creator would get a compensation whose amount is at least equal to the third prize. But it is always good news for the creators when there are more entries than what were originally in the rules and it's always a good, good news for the, for the community. Uh, the next what if question will be what if the company wants a submission to be thoroughly modified before public use? So this is a an illustration of how modification can be done once the client has purchased the IP rights. This is uh, the pop-top content contest with on the left the, the ID from the IK community and on the right what has been done by the client and you see that it has been slightly different, it has been modified before uh, its public use. So uh, once the client has purchased the right he has the possibility to have the entry redone and to create a de derivative work or to have it refined according to professional standards. It can be done by the company or its agency. It also can be done by the creator itself. Uh, but we believe that if the modification to be done is quite material, it's fair to the community and to, to the creator to provide the creator with the additional remuneration. But you should know that if there is just a little modification to the, uh, to the entry, just like a little editing or cropping, the company can ask the creator to, to make such little modification as a condition to grant the original prize. So if it's just a little modification, then there is no need for further um, compensation or prizes. And the last uh, what if question will be, what if the company wants to only use the copyrighted elements in its advertisement, like a character? So we took the example of the Carrefour Tur uh, Turkey contest with the guy who came up with this very, very creative idea of uh, using the Turkish I in the zero of the 20 for the 20th anniversary of Carrefour, and it was just this particular element which found, that the client found really great. And as you see on the right, 
it it was used uh, just this element was used in the actual uh, document by the company so to answer the question um, the client can only may only be interested in just one part of the submission but it's not that big a deal it can use only such um, part of the entry if he is only interested in using this element it can be a logo or a character thank you uh, thank you all for attending this uh, this legal webinar webinar I hope you have enjoyed it and I hope that we have uh, answered the question that you may have had uh, about crowdsourcing and the legal uh, questions uh, please know that uh, the presentation is available on SlideShare and feel free to, to contact me uh, if you have more questions or if you are, want to, to learn more about crowdsourcing and I would be delighted to, to help you and to answer some of your questions. Have a nice evening and you should know that the um, video of uh, this presentation will be available online too. Bye-bye.